part to the whole issue. Um, how you think we treated boards? Okay, boards are. Um, this is a classic example right here. So a lot of people will take photographs um, where it looks so plain are the spirits of the deceased uh, coming to let people know that they are around. Mm -hmm. And so for this particular bear, a grizzly, is right next to where I saw Ephraim upstairs. The railing is just to the left out of the picture. And is so it just a loud ringing? No, it's a it's a oh display. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a show. So what happened was again I there was just note amongst the staff about the joke about Ephraim being around and, and doing something to the board and things like that. And this woman was visiting from overseas from England and she came downstairs. She was with her family, they were wandering around upstairs. She came downstairs and started talking to me. And then I guess the conversation turned around that she then felt that she could um, confide in me or ask me this. And she said, uh, is there something about that bear upstairs? I've just taken a photograph of it and a couple of photographs of it. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, you might think I'm crazy, but she says, when I was standing there, I could feel the presence of a man by this chair. And I said, really? And she couldn't really explain anything more than that. She said, I don't, it's not maybe the malevolence or anything, but I just feel very strongly that there's a man spirit present there. And what had happened was this, she'd taken this photograph and then saw this orb. She took another photograph because her logical mind was saying, ah, it's some dirt on the lens, right? Or it's, it's smudge on the, the lens or whatever. So she put it in there. No, she didn't put it in the lens. She took another photograph next to it and I saw that photograph too and there was nothing, there was nothing wrong with it. So to me this is a classic, the orbs will either be very transparent like that, mm -hmm. they'll, and this is a very even one, you'll have others that are small and very dense. Um, we'll see a little bit further on, oh okay, this is Essendale's painting. Um, this is in the walking up the stairs to the Essendale Art Gallery, gallery. it's called Spirit Woman. So now this is another one where you use the imagination. Yeah, and it's a spirit house. So a spirit house is built by the um, Aboriginal people over the grave. It's eastward orientation, so that at night the spirits can go out and wander, and when the sun comes up and hits the eastern entrance, they know it's time to get back inside. Um, it's it's got Russian influence, believe it or not. So you can see things like the Kremlin and the um, cross there. So there's the spirit woman. Yeah, spirit um, house there. So there's actually a wolf in this one too. Okay, so there's a wolf. Okay. Yes. So people have seen this one too. <coughs> you didn't see it first. This was um, there's a wolf in this one as well. So if you look, uh, see the wolf right here. He's looking straight at you. Oh yeah. See his ears there. There's his eyes and his nose. So yeah, and then other people saw this other one there, which we hadn't seen yet, the scarf there, which is, it could be like a head and then a long float body, or it could be a face too, like a bear or something. Yeah, it could be like a face. Yeah, it could be like a face. Yeah, it's half, halfway up the, um, the stairs to the end. This is uh, a spirit house um, that's in big gray flats in Wilmore Wilding Park. It's um, Pierre de Lorme's uh, spirit house, grave. He was a man about six foot eight. He was blind and incredible outdoorsman. He was riding along and he fell off his horse, hit his head on a rock, um, managed to get back on his horse and ride it up there and it's where he collapsed and died at that spot. So what the Aboriginal people will usually do is wherever the person or the old tradition, I don't know whether that's the right name, but they used to just bury them right where they had died. And so this spirit house um, would break over to a grave. And this man who took this picture, um, he's a hunter. Uh, he said it was raining and he had his hat on and he had his camera balanced underneath his hat and he waited and the sun came out for a few seconds and when it did, the 
this double rainbow appeared and you got the picture. But I really like this one too because remember I was telling you earlier that the Tibetan belief system is that the when the spirit uh, when the person dies and the spirit is released, the rainbow appears. So to me this is classic because you've got Uh, not sure about that, but it, it would have been close by. This was. I think they took some children out there. Oh it yeah. Was ceremonial. Um, for the hundredth cent the centennial, yeah, that was uh, two thousand and seven or eight. That happened, and they they retraced the steps and rebuilt some of the spirit houses from the Grand Cache yeah. back to Jasper, yeah, and paid paid their respects. But anyway, I liked it because you can see the rainbow coming straight out of the spirit house. So I just love that picture. And this is another shot of it taken by uh, Jack Dienick, who is um, a great outdoorsman, a retired teacher who's done extensive hiking into Wilmore, and he takes great photographs. So this was taken before the, the previous photograph um, when yeah, with the remains of Pierre Delorme's spirit house was collapsing. What they do is that it's, they usually let it just uh, as, the, as the remains go back into the ground so the spirit house is allowed to disintegrate and go back into the ground. Although sometimes now they will repair them. So that's what they did with this one. The previous shot with the double rainbows was, um, was repaired. So this is very close to Grand Cache, it's Grand Mountain in the background, um, also taken by Jack Dienick. And it's a poignant little grave that's got a five-year-old little girl buried there, all on her own, just in the middle. Of, it's very close to what's called Sheep Creek. Um, they used to have a, a settlement there that got washed away in a, in a great flood. Um, in the, the latest book, I've got stories around this because it took us about three hours to found, find the remains of the, the cabins and things. But it was it definitely had an atmosphere, that place. Uh, and there was a big eagle that was flying overhead while I was sitting for a little while, just paying my respects. And um, there might be a photograph here that I've included. But again, with the Aboriginal laws, you know, it's very powerful to have an eagle flying nearby. This is another place uh, called McDonald Flats, which is on the southeast side of town. No, not southeast, northeast side of town. And uh, remains of a spirit house. This is a very haunted spot. They've had horses being very nervous around there. They've heard screeches, which some Aboriginals say is Sasquatches. There's supposed to be a lot of Sasquatches around town around this area, um, I got some really cool stories. The, the best one I got was in the epilogue that I just included with the latest book. And that was happened by Victor Lane. It was a very uh, detailed experience that was shared to me. But in the background, oh, this thing has given up. Anyway, at the background there, past, uh, sort of in the middle, the you can see some cabins, yeah. yeah. There's remains of cabins there as well. What's the name of those flats? McDonald Flats. They're not all that easy to get to. This is one of the cabins. It's been allowed to go back into the ground. In Wilmer Wilderness Park too, there are trapper cabins, the remains of trapper cabins. And there's a really cool story um, that Bob shared about uh, a legend of the, the Russian that was found buried, uh, not buried, was in one of the cabins. Uh, anyway, it's, it's quite an involved story. This is another cabin around McDonald Flats. These places definitely have an atmosphere. I wouldn't like to be there alone at night, that's for sure. <laughs> Just uh, This one's uh, uh, near Clark's Crossing, which is a uh, junction of Smoky River and um, Muddy Waters, I think it is. Harry, you did some hikes into Wilmore, didn't you? With no. the group, didn't you? No. Oh, okay, I'm going to get him mixed up with John Gillette. He goes for John a lot of them. Yeah. This is another one called uh, mm -hmm. Zender Creek. You can almost see the grass side on the roof. Mm -hmm. Now, were these trappers' cabins or did people live in these cabins? 
Some, most of them were trappers' cabins, uh, and others would have been. Um, uh, there's a guy called Stan Clark. That last one was Clark's cabin. Uh, at Clark's Crossing it was his cabin. Um, entrepreneurs, you know, they came out and traded with the Aboriginal people. Did trading. They did some outfitting. You know, they did whatever to stay alive, I guess, and live in the bush. 